BMW has finally done it. Something that was missing in the BMW Z4 is now coming for the 2024 model year. And what I'm talking about is, of course, the six-speed manual transmission straight from the Supra. It's going to be the exact same transmission. And I think this is a great idea because it's only this generation that didn't have the manual transmission for the Z4. And I've been a huge fan of the design of the Z4 ever since the first iteration from Anders Warming up to Julian Blasi's second generation where it became a little bit more organic, more fluid. And now this later generation, latest one, feels like it went back to this sort of flame surfacing introduced by the X-Coupe concept and the BMW G9 Chris Bangle. It feels like sort of an old school BMW design. So what we're gonna do in this video is have a look at this design from the front side and rear, also with the top up and the top down, like we did with the Mercedes SL yesterday and then of course we have to look at this stunning beautiful traditional looking interior the old ways were way better than what we have today for sure when it comes to interiors but before we do that let's have a look at what's going on with the new 2024 BMW Z4 manual transmission so BMW drops a manual transmission into the Z4 and transforms the two-seater into a throwback driver's car as it should be as the BMW has always been so BMW has had enough of Toyota getting all the attention specifically here where it comes to the six-speed manual transmission that piece of enthusiast hardware has been conspicuously absent in the z4 in the united states since 2017 and we have the return return of it in 2024 you'll pay a little bit more for the z4 uh, manual it's also going to be a little slower but i think the z4 is a perfect car to have a manual transmission in. I also made a review of the M40i with the, of course, the automatic transmission in the 2023 model year on the SketchMonkey channel, where I talk more in detail and in person about the design. And also I take it out for a drive and let you know about the driving experience. You can go and check that out by searching B, um, <laughs> by searching the SketchMonkey BMW Z4. And I'm gonna also link that down in the description. So you pay more for this because there is more to it than just a clutch pedal. For example, the six-speed is part of a comprehensive package available only on the M40i and likely priced at about $3,500, designed to make the Z4 into more of an involving driver-oriented machine. And when I drove the M40i, I was surprised that they didn't call this straight up an M Z or Z4 M coupe or a Z4 M uh, roadster in this case because it's such a quick car and the handling felt like an M car. So in addition to the ele electronically controlled M differential that all M40i Z4 gets, the manual steering is tuned to provide more feel and the adaptive dampers are re recalibrated to suit aggressive driving. I think it's already very aggressive this Z4, the, the, uh, the steering and the dampers. However, it doesn't hurt to have it a little bit more sporty. However, here comes the BMW sprinkle in some 2024 vibes onto the uh, Z4. The manual to, uh, Z4's wheels and tires are staggered sizes, not only in width, but also in diameter, because you have 19s in the front, 20s in the back. Just give me 20s all around, please. That change alone gives the car a subtle hot wheel stance, and that's exactly what I've been saying when I look at BMWs with this uh, staggered setup. The manual Z4 isn't trying to be an M car, and it feels comfortable enough for long hauls. I wonder how much more how much stiffer this manual is going to be with the new dampers and the steering than the uh, automatic. The automatic is very, very comfortable. If you want it to be sporty, just put it in sport mode. It has the same 382 horsepower six uh, cylinder that you have in the automatic. The transmission is also the same straight taken from the Toyota Supra, which is totally fine because that is a fantastic transmission. I made a review on that as well on the SketchMonkey. Just search the SketchMonkey Supra and that review of the manual Supra will come up. You never miss a shift, nor do you worry about a sting of vibration making its way from the six speeds innards up to your hand. And this is something that I definitely do not mind feeling some of that mechanical stuff going on in the shifter. I think that only adds to the driving experience instead of having to be completely disconnected from any sort of vibration what's going on underneath the gear shifter. As we talked about, this is going to be a little bit slower. So the automatic Z4 M40i is 3.5 seconds, 0 to 60 and 12 second quarter mile. And this will be a little bit slower than that. Doesn't matter. It's still a manual transmission. Makes up for the, la for the slower speed. Still gonna, it's still going to be a very quick car so they, they don't intend to have this in a limited production they're gonna just gonna build as many as people want to buy and if i were to buy a z4 today i would definitely wait for 2024 
and get the manual transmission specifically since we have the old iDrive 7 I believe interior still hopefully in 2024 I hope BMW is not gonna mess that up so with that said let's jump into Photoshop here and let's have a look at uh, <coughs> this design from a front side rear uh, top up top down and also of course the interior and how it differentiates from modern BMWs today but what I like about this design is that it, it feels like as I said almost like an old school BMW with the uh, features, the key, the key features such as the headlights, and we have the in, uh, the intakes in the lower section separated. They don't intrude up in this area like we do in modern BMWs. Instead, we have a clear separation between the top graphics, which are the headlights and the grille, and then we have the lower section down here, which houses all the traditional intakes for a BMW. We also have sort of a um, classic layout or styling for the lower intakes. This typical small little small M uh, intake in the middle as you can see right here and then we have the small intakes right here on the on the corners similar to what we have in the E46 M3 the E39 M5 etc actually in the previous M5 the current M5 also has this uh, traditional beautiful BMW design language that we're used to seeing over the decades couple of details that I wanted to redesign in my uh, in-person review that I actually did in the video were uh, having the, these headlights I don't want to have them stick up too far have this upward angle too much into the fender instead have them be a little bit more horizontal and in line with the line that we have here on top of the grill and I also believe I do I did redesign this area down here because if you look here if we zoom in it's a, it's a lot of complexities going on here we have one chamfer here another line cutting up here we have more lines in the bottom this intake that kind of is part of the larger intake in the middle it's just too complex for me and I decided to simplify that just a little bit now looking at this with the top up and the top down this is again just like the s cell i think every car that was originally intended to be designed and produced as a roadster as a convertible they look better with the roof down than cars that weren't designed as roadsters from the beginning for example the 370z were designed initially as coupes they turned them into roadsters and they just do not look good at all with the roof down here though looking at the line flow that we have in the z4 and this is what I'm talking about when it, when it comes to uh, flame surfacing we do have a little bit of that going on in, in this design because it reminds me of the first generation z4 and the bmw gina you have the three series the five series of the time the seven series all have this flame surfacing influence in it and i think that comes back or sticks around for 2024 as well in the z4 love the rear end spoiler that we have in the back here the taillights looks very nice and juicy with this big dynamic led thick in the side then becomes thinner as we go towards the center of the rear end beautifully done and here you can see that we do have the same size wheels because this is a 2023 model so i do believe that these look like uh, maybe 19 inch i do not believe these are 20s but i would probably want to have 20s on the z4 because it, we have a lot of rubber here it's going to help with the comfort of course but i'd rather have it be a little bit more bumpy with some larger wheels on it and then moving down here you can see with the roof up it still looks very good we have this line following exactly the cut line for the door going in right here looking nice we have a coupe style i do also like that they decided to go with a fabric top cloth top instead of having it be foldable uh, metal roof because first of all it's going to save weight second of all i think it looks classier to have a cloth top we still have of course the same lines that we have in the <laughs> in the uh, roof down because the body doesn't change this is not a bmw gina now looking at the rear end what i love about this rear end design two things we have first of all the ducktail sticking up here a beautifully sculpted ducktail and looking at it from a side view you can see just how nicely the design is sent off in the rear end with a scoop upswing and that also of course helps with a little bit of downforce in higher speeds the second thing i love about this rear end are the taillights because they have very slim look to it and what this does we talked about this before is when you have slim taillights like this with the majority of the mass of the led being in the very far end that means that the mass the volume of the led is dragging out the design so this makes it feel wider because it's stretched out by these taillights to each side i did a small redesign of the rear end in my review video as well and that has to do with this line right here in the bumper so you see this how this just cuts in and then fades doesn't have a connection to any anything in this area so what i did is just simplify this and what i did is turn this line the bumper line 
have it instead of going up here, I just turned it into a line that continues into this section here. So we have a clear uh, continuation of this line going all around the rear end. And I do believe that cleaned up the rear end a little bit, but that's just a detail. It's not as bad or as complex as we have in the in the front end design. The lower section, here's where you can see that this is not an M model because we don't have the quad tailpipes. Instead, we do have these two almost rect rectangular pipes. And the diffuser is very subtle as well. I think if this were to be an M uh, car, it would have a much more aggressive diffuser with some wings and winglets going on right here. But this looks fine for an M40i. I do wish to see what BMW would do if they dropped a brand new uh, M Roadster, the uh, like the old one, the flame surfacing, the Anders Warming design when they made that into an M car and specifically the coupe is just a stunning, stunning design. Now, last but not least, we need to talk about this interior because look at this. Look at how beautifully integrated everything. Nice line flow. You have the heart of the communication center of the car sitting deep inside of the dash. We do have this housing for it up top. It sits in between the uh, event on the left side and the infotainment framing on the right side. Again, very deep in here. The graphics looks fantastic. It looks similar to what we have in the iDrive 8, even though it's housed in such a better way here. Same goes for the infotainment screen. I, I don't understand. I want to hear the reasoning why we went from this to have just that flat screen. It doesn't even have a nice border to it like we have in BMWs today. This was 10 times better than what we have in current BMWs. I also like that we have some of the complexities that we have in the outside on the surfacing coming back inside here because look at the complexities that we have in this area. Instead of just having it be flat or rounded like this, they added some, the designers had some fun and sketch, got creative in that area and I do like how it turned out. And last but not least, look at all these beautiful buttons that we have here. A lot of buttons for the climate control settings and I've driven pretty much every single new BMW for for 2024 and this is so much easier to quickly figure out what you want to do turn the heated seats on cool down or turn the ventilated seats on or whatever you want to do just have a button like this for it it's so much easier than going into the climate control settings that we have or the software sp specifically for new bmws it doesn't look good, first of all. The, the graphics doesn't look as good as the gauge cost, cluster graphics, and it's not intuitive. And that's another reason why I really don't understand why we went away from this. But enough complaining about today's uh, interiors and all the digital pieces that we get today, pixelated everything. It's still a beautiful interior, this. You can see the paddles here, this being the automatic, of course. This is where the major change is gonna happen. I do believe this is gonna get a little wider, just like it did in the Toyota Supra. Supra, well, that's totally fine because as I said to me the BMW Z4 is a car that uh, almost feels like it naturally should have a manual transmission. I'm really glad that BMW is bringing that back for 2024.